Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I want to talk about something that depending on how much exposure you have to other programming languages, specifically functional ones, it might sound a little bit controversial and that is should you stop returning null in your code? Now C -sharp is an object oriented programming language and depending on whether this object exists or not you might want to return null back or if you don't have something to return you just return null which is a null reference which basically means nothing the problem is that even the creator of null has said that creating null was his one billion dollar mistake talking about so many companies and so much software that has blown up because of a null reference exception leading to downtime leading to losing money for the company now how can we prevent that let me just say now that I won't be touching on the null reference types feature that C Sharp added in C Sharp 8. This is a completely different thing. This one will talk about the idea of option, optional, or maybe, depending on whichever programming language you use. I think Haskell calls it maybe, F Sharp calls it uh, option. And we're going to see how we can implement this in our C Sharp code to potentially prevent null reference exceptions and, in general, issues with our code making it more bulletproof this video is part of my general asp donor core and c sharp series so if you don't want to miss any episodes please subscribe ring the sub notification bell to get notified when i upload a new video so what i have here is a regular api which uh, has a customer controller and this controller has two endpoints one allows us to get a customer by id and the other one allows us to get all customers if i quickly run this and i go to postman and i click get all customers i can get just one customer in the database and you can see that i'm using a structure very familiar potentially with you which is i have an interface for an iCustomer customer repository and an interface for an iCustomer customer service and then implementation for that now in this specific scenario the repository is using an in-memory database just for simplicity's sake just for me to illustrate the point but the code wouldn't look much different with a realistic connection you try to get something from the database and whether you found it or not you would be returning the item which in this case is the customer or null because there is nothing there you might be looking at this and thinking yeah this is how we do things and that's true that's exactly how we do things the only thing that you have to do upstream is to ensure that at some point the null is checked and then you return something specific to that case but this is a very isolated scenario for a very common thing that you will definitely catch because you need to return and not found if the customer is null or else you return okay and the customer itself but what happens if you have a bigger co uh, code base even in a microservices scenario where you have someone handle nulls that accidentally might blow up because you haven't checked for them how can you prevent that how can you force people to check for potential nulls in order to make your code more bulletproof this is where the idea of option comes in and there's many libraries that implement it but my personal favorite library for functional extensions in c -sharp is language extensions and i'm gonna go to nuget very very quickly and i'm gonna type in language ext.core and i'm gonna add this core package and this now will add a bunch of um, classes, structs, and extensions in C Sharp to allow me to use functional elements like option, which is the first one we'll be looking at, to prevent us from just returning uh, the object itself, but returning an option of the object. And what this means, it's basically that a thing you return can have two states. It's either some value or no value, but not null, just the idea of no value. And let's see how this would look like in our code. So I can go back to my repository where I'm returning the data. And instead of returning customer, which is nullable, even though it's not marked as nullable, it is still something that can be null. I change this to return an option of customer. And I'm adding this here. And then I can go back to my interface and I can say, hey, this is an option, get. And as you can see, nothing actually changed in my code. I, I can leave this as it is for now. And, and I'm going to leave this as it is for now, just to show you something. Now I'm gonna go back to the uh, service, which is uh, the idea of this layer is you're gonna have some business logic stuff, some transformation potentially, 
and then eventually um, you you get the customer if you want to and I'm gonna change this to an option of customer again and I'm gonna have to do this on the interface layer and now our code has been changed there is one thing left as you can see here the customer is no longer a customer it is an option of customer and this null check will never be true because option is a struct and structs cannot be null so this is impossible to be invoked however there is a way to handle none so the idea of there is no customer and the way you would do that is you'd say I can simply say return or just to illustrate this better I can change this to uh, customer option and then customer and in fact I don't need to create a customer object I can just say return and here all I need to do is say customer option dot match and you can also have async uh, options on this matching and then you have two delegates effectively in this method the first one is what happens when there is some value so if there is a customer then return okay the response okay as with a customer object and if there is nothing which is the second part then return not found and for this to work because there's ambiguity on the type I just need to say that matches to an I action result and now let me break this down so you can see it better now I'm matching the option that might have some value or none value and I'm returning based on that I'm handling both scenarios and I can actually short write this as well and this actually means the exact same so my uh, handling now becomes this match the customer option that might have some value and if there is some value return the value as okay and if there is nothing found actually when there is uh, no value return not found and if I run the code as it is I haven't changed anything yet in the repo other than the type of course you can see here that if I copy this ID and I paste it here I'm getting myself back but if I change this to another value and I say send I'm getting not found because the object doesn't exist in the database so how did this happen because if I put a breakpoint here and I run this again you will see that as I'm stepping into the get method and into the repository method this is false there is nothing found so this will return null here but when I go back this is not null this changed into none and this happened because the object option sorry the struct option option has an implicit and an explicit operator actually has a bunch of them to be able to handle scenarios where the value incoming is null uh, and it will convert it into none there's a lot of stuff in here and if you're into this type of thing you can actually check the source you don't need to uh, just know that by default if you return none option will assume that it is no value and it will default it to none if you return some value then it will map it to some value and I can stop this but actually the appropriate way to do this would be to return customer as you do here and here you can say return none instead of null so return nothing of type option of type customer and you can do the same with a customer one as well you can say uh, customer dot to sum and this will convert it into some option uh, you could also statically import it and you could say sum uh, create and you can wrap it around that uh, this is completely up to you there are implicit operators and explicit operators that will do this for you but once you have it at as deep of a layer as possible you will now be forced across your application to handle both scenarios there is no way and let me show you this there is no way to go to customer option and say give me the value I mean there is a way you can do value unsafe but you should never never do that this is like a last case resort 
uh, what you want to do is use the match uh, method or the match async if you're using an async operation inside match and this is how you should do it and and the reason why I'm showing you this is because I like to show you things that I'm practically using on a day-to-day -day basis and this is one of the things alongside several others that I'm gonna be showing in future videos that we can borrow these functional concepts into our object-oriented programming language and we can actually heavily benefit off of it. I have practically eliminated all the null reference exceptions that I used to get in my application, even with unit tests in some scenarios, by using option. This is not for everyone and I'm not actually advocating for it. What I'm saying is there is this thing as well here that might be for you and you might want to look into it. And I'd like to bring to you things that I use that I find interesting that might be of use to you. So this is all for this video, just making you aware of this project and I highly recommend you go and give it a star on GitHub because it's a brilliant project. It has many other things in it that I'm actually going to be making a video about. And if you like this sort of functional approach, you can actually leave a comment down below and I will make more of them. That's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, ring the bell as well to get notified when I upload a new episode. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.